You know, all that I've determined to know nothing but Christ and Him crucified. The cross is the center of human history. Right? But I want to talk about the cross as parable for me when it comes to peace. Because peace is about your relationships. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. When you're at peace with somebody, you have a good relationship. When you're at war with somebody, that's not a good relationship. Mm -hmm. So let me just talk to you a moment and, and show you the cross as a, as a parable, so to speak. Let me zoom in here a minute so you can see my incredible hand-drawn artwork. artwork. This is a picture of the cross. Uh, of course, you all know what the cross looks like. But I want you to see something here. The cross consists of two pieces. The vertical bar, which is was planted in the ground, right? Yes. That represents the relationship between God up here and man below. Mm -hmm. Because first, and what's grounded, has to be man's relationship with God. And then the horizontal bar, right here, mm -hmm. that represents man's relationship with other men. But if this is not supported by the relationship between God and man, it falls to the ground and collapses. Now, I mean, this is really, really important to get an understanding of because what that, what that means is that unless there is a relationship with God to support the relationship, you will never have a right relationship with man. It will collapse. It will always collapse and fall to the ground. So this is really, really important. And of course, obviously, the world can't understand this. That every human relationship has to be supported by a relationship between individuals and God. Okay? Does that make, make sense to you? Because this is why, when we talk about being peacemakers, you cannot go out and bring end conflict between men until those men end the conflict they have with God. All right. right. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my age here. I'll give away my age. Do I still look cute? Okay. You guys are supposed to cheer me on or something. All right. I'm a war baby. I'm what was called a war baby. That's right. I was born in 1943, in the midst of the Second World War, a, a horror. I mean, it engulfed the world, yes. and was responsible for the death of millions upon millions upon millions of people. Right. Mm -hmm. I was born into that environment. When I was a young child in grammar school, I remember I went to a Catholic grammar school and each day we would go to, to church to pray for the soldiers right. who were fighting in Korea. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because that was a, that was a horror. Yes. The, this war that was going on in Korea. Then when finally a ceasefire was declared in Korea, Korea. And by the way, there has never been a cessation of that war. It never ended. There has been a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. But the war has never officially ended. Okay? But after that, so, now I spent the balance of my grammar school and then into my high school days listening to the regular testing of air raid sirens. I can remember this. Every Friday at noon, the air raid sirens would go off and we had to make sure that they worked. Mm -hmm. And we would all jump under our magic wooden desks. I mean, I went to school just outside of New York City, you know, and we had, in our Catholic school, we had these little wooden desks, and we'd jump under them, because that would protect you from the nuclear bombs that were going off all around you, okay? But that was the, the environment that I was growing up into, from, you know, into my adulthood from. Mm -hmm. When I got out of there, I went to the, to the U.S. Navy. I joined the U.S. Navy to fly, and I joined the U.S. Navy in the early 60s, just in time for the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm -hmm which was about that close, brought us to the brink of nuclear war with Russia, between the United States and Russia. Mm -hmm. okay. I was flying patrols around Russia, as a matter of fact, in the Navy, watching for the ICBMs, the Intercontinental, uh, Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, to come flying, and that was my job, was to fly patrols around uh, Russia in anticipation of a nuclear missile attack. Mm -hmm. I married Alice, my lovely bride Alice. By the way, yesterday was our anniversary. Ta da! 44 years and five months. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But we, we got married in the 60s. Mm -hmm. 67. In 67 to be exact. Most of you are, I'm sure, not old enough to actually remember this. But when Alice and I got married, we lived in a country that was at war with itself. Mm. 
You could turn on, I mean, this was a time of assassinations in the 60s when John Kennedy was assassinated, when Martin Luther King was assassinated, when Robert Kennedy was assassinated, and there were so many political assassinations. But more than that, there were riots all through that period based on politics, based on race. And I, when Alice and I got married, I mean, you could turn on the television at night and watch smoke rising. It looked like the Second World War all over. Watch Detroit burning. Watching Los Angeles burning. What? Watching New Newark burning. Watching city after city burning around the United States. I don't know if this is taught in history today, but I mean, that was the environment that, that I grew up into, that I was you know, born into, that I grew up into, that Alice and I were married during. I mean, millions of people around the world watch city after city burning in the United States of America. Let me just tell you this. War is something that lives in the heart and manifests in the flesh. Mm. Or it should be with us who have been saved by the shed blood of the Lamb that love lives in the heart and manifests in the flesh. It's either one or the other. There is no in-between. The only hope for peace between two men is you. And I, because we bring the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus Christ in every situation. And He's the only hope for peace. There is no other hope for peace. I've got peace, love.